So let's continue our look at relational databases by looking at a very specific baseball database that we're going to be using throughout Sabermetrics 101. It's called the Lehman Baseball Database, and it was put on the internet in the mid-1990s by Sean Lehman. Sean provided a place on the internet where people could get access to these baseball data, a huge benefit to all baseball analysts. Now to be clear, it's pretty well known that Sean got these data from existing sources, and those existing sources were essentially the great Pete Palmer, and it's hard work typing in all the print records of annual player season data, annual summary statistics that you might see on the back of a baseball card that were printed in large baseball encyclopedias. So let's take a look at the structure of this database. Let's go through exactly what the Lehman database looks like. Remember, it's a relational database. And what does that mean? Well, here's what it means. This is a graphic showing all the various tables in the Lehman database. There's an awards table. There's a master table that has information about players and their birth year, their birth month, their birthday, what country they were born in. There's a postseason batting table. There's a postseason fielding table. Now remember, each of these is just one table of many tables inside the whole database. All these different rectangles represent a different table. These are all different tables inside the database. So within the batting table, and here's the batting table right here, within the batting table, there are many different columns, many different fields in this batting table. So for example, there are triples, doubles, home runs by each of the batters in the batting table. One very interesting variable here inside the batting table is called the stint. The stint variable is a way to keep track of players who might be traded mid-season. They've played for two different teams in the same season. Since this table is structured by players and seasons, if a player plays for two teams in one season, they'll have two records here, one for each team they played for, each stint during that player season. So that's the schema of the batting table. But remember, relational databases are made up of tables, and each of these rectangles here is one of those tables. Each of those tables has a bunch of records. And that's what they're called, data records. Data records are records within each table. And it's defined. It's defined by the structure of the table. And the table heading here tells us what's going on in the table. This list here, this list right here, defines the column headings of the table and each row in the table represents another record. So we have a structure now that we can fit the data to. When we define these tables, these structures, we're defining the data we want to store inside these tables and therefore inside the whole database. Now let's look at a subset of tables of the Lehman database, not all the tables we saw in the previous graphic, just a subset of five tables that are very commonly used by analysts. Now we haven't listed every column heading in each of these tables either. As you can see, there are only a few columns listed here. We just want to explain more about the schema or the database model that goes on when you create a database. So there's five tables here, five data tables here. The batting table, which lists the at-bats, runs, hits, doubles, triples, home runs that a batter might make while they're playing any given season. We also have the fielding table, the pitching table, keeps track of pitching data for every year on every pitcher in the game. For the pitching table, you've got games, games started, complete games, shutout saves, hits, earned runs, all in the pitching table. Now for every player you have in the master table, you've got different player IDs. Here's the master table at the top, and there's different player IDs. 
we'll be starting to get familiar with these IDs and what their usefulness is in databases. But in the master table, you keep track of where and when the player was born, when they died. There's just different basic biographical information inside the master table. There's one other table important in the layman database. That's the teams table here. And this table lists the teams themselves, the New York Yankees, the Houston Astros, the Boston Red Sox, the Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim, and it describes the division they play in, East West Central, the league, how many games they played at home. In this table, besides a few items listed here, there's a bunch of other actual data. The team runs scored, the team runs allowed, the earned run average is a pitching staff of the whole team. So by looking closely at these tables, looking closely at these data, we can start seeing how the Lehman database is put together. But notice this other set of icons. These keys are key. They are important because when you talk about how to design your database, you've got to think about each table, what data will be in each table, and the set of keys that make each record, each row unique. And these keys allow the user to help index or search that table, and they help organize the specific table in a certain way. But importantly, these keys help us connect the various tables to join the tables together and join the data within the tables as needed. The SQL commands that help us, that help us join tables will be reviewed in a future module. If I want to look at the batting data, I can find the set of keys that lead to the batting table. There's the player ID, which might be Albert Pujols or Derek Jeter's unique player ID. There's a unique ID for each of the players. Pujols has his specific player ID and Jeter has his. But remember, each of the records, each of the rows in the batting table describes one stint of one player on one team in one year one stint of one player on one team in one year. So when you start playing with the SQL Sandbox in the next videos, you're going to start seeing these data in the batting tables, fielding tables, pitching tables, master tables, or various tables in the Lehman database. Each of these tables was designed by the database designer. And each of these tables has to have a unique index for each of the records in each of the data tables. Each record has a unique index within the tables. So, in summary, we've got tables. There are multiple tables within a database. Here are the tables, various tables within the database. Tables have fields and records. Fields are column names, and that's in the list here in the schema that we're showing. These are the fields or column names, and they have records. There are multiple records within the table. Different rows are represented as different records. Fields are essentially the different columns. So an important way to describe the database is to describe the tables, all the fields or columns in the tables, how these tables are related to each other, and then how these tables are indexed or uniquely described in each of the rows or records in the tables. This whole description is considered the database schema or the structure of the database. So that's a new term, database model or schema. The whole set of things, the various tables, the different fields in each of the tables, the relationship between the tables, how they're connected and how the different unique keys are connected table to table. And then of course, how each of the keys or indexes or indices inside each of these tables. All of these relationships describe the database model or schema. The schema describes how the whole database is put together. Once you start playing with the data in the Lehman database inside the BU SQL Sandbox, this should become more clear. So play with the data, look at how, and look and see how these data are connected. So this is where you probably start seeing the efficiency of relational databases in terms of storing data. We could certainly have a large record of a player's season's data. We could have Albert Pujols in one year 
And we could include in that record his birthplace, his birth year, information about the St. Louis Cardinals, the team he played for. It could be all put in one large single row in one very large database. But to save storage, to save space that you're going to store the data on the hard drives and the computer systems everywhere, you make tables for storage efficiency. Years ago, when people started designing databases, storage, computer storage itself, was at a premium. If you're new to databases, you might want to review what we've talked about here, maybe watch this video again. But the best thing to do is to go ahead and play with the baseball data in the BU SQL Sandbox. So you see how these tables go together and you can see the relationship be between these tables for yourself. As we advance through the SQL commands we're going to learn in this course, you'll have a much better understanding of how tables are put together inside these databases. So next video is using the SQL Sandbox. We're going to dive right in and start doing some queries and getting some baseball data for us to play with.